Okay, uh, so next up we have Coral um, from Into University, Ooh. and she's going to be talking about fostering a sense of belonging, building communities in online classrooms. Um, so over to you, Coral. I hope I pronounced that right. Sorry. It's a... Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> no worries. Um, just checking, you can all hear me and you can see my screen as well. Uh, I think it's just loading. Yes, we can. Yeah. Perfect. OK. Um, so hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm, I'm Coral. I'm coming to you from a very wet and dreary Scotland today. Um, I'd love to know where you're coming from. If you wanted to just type in the chat, say a quick hello, where you're coming from, that'd be great. Um, so this presentation is all about fostering a sense of belonging, building communities in online classrooms. Um, and as Phil said, I'm here representing into university partnerships. So moving straight along, um, as with um, pretty much all of us um, over the last year, into had to move rapidly to online learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But because into works with multiple university partners, um, we really felt that it was important for our students not only to feel part of their individual class, but their wider university, um, as well as into as an organisation as a whole, because um, into has quite a strong presence for face to face students and they feel like into students. And then we really wanted to be able to replicate that in an online environment. Um, hi, everyone. I can see all your messages coming in, some from Scotland. Nice to see you. Um, so we really wanted to focus on that. And part of my role, I'm a learning technologist, and um, part of my role was to focus on staff training and upskilling for our teachers and our support staff, not only in the space of online learning and technical skills, but also in being able to support those communities and really help build that sense of belonging. Um, and actually we found um, our student satisfaction was significantly higher this year than it has been previously. So um, in our student satisfaction surveys, not we were actually able to increase student satisfaction. And um, one thing that they commented on was really being able to feel part of a community and um, more flexibility, personalization. So that's really what I wanted to talk about today is what we did and how we focused on that um, in our training. So as we know, a sense of belonging really, really matters. I want you to think about a time where you haven't felt like you belong to a community. Um, I'm sure we've all gone through that at some point, whether it be, you know, a new job, a new social situation, um, a, a group that you've been put into for something. And when you don't feel like you belong to that group, think about how that affects how you interact with that group. Um, you're probably less likely to want to speak up. You probably don't want to um, give your opinion. You may even shrink back and, and not interact with that group at all. And those are all things that happen to our students when they don't feel like they belong to part of a group and actually it's much more common in an online environment because students often have less opportunities to connect than they do face to face face to face it can happen very organically and um, students can connect in social situations but we know that when students do connect and they feel like they belong it can really help with student engagement student attainment learner satisfaction and in our current climate more importantly mental health and well-being. So that's really why we wanted to focus on this. So there's lots of different frameworks and concepts and ideas around how to build in community, but something that I found um, interesting that I think really highlights the importance um, is the Community of Inquiry Framework by Garrison. And this framework um, really talks about having three things present to create a really good educational experience. And the three things you can see are equally weighted. So there's teacher presence and having someone that's there to set your goals and give you direction, cognitive presence. So being able to actually engage with the content, but equally important to that in an online environment is social presence and being able to engage with the participants. And all of those three things have to come together to create that educational experience. And the, the sort of definition of this in this framework is that Participants are able to one, identify with a community. They're able to purposefully communicate in a trusted environment, develop interpersonal relationships, but also protect their individual personalities. So those were the key areas that we focused on when we trained our staff and when we discussed this with our staff. 
So the framework that we used were these four areas. Now, obviously, when you know when I'm training staff, when I'm seeing staff, I go through the student journey from beginning to end and go really in depth to all of these areas. We don't have time to do that today, so I'm just going to touch on them for you and give you some examples. The first one, the first area that we really focused on was a safe space. Now, a sense of belonging requires a space to belong to, right? So we need to make sure our students have a space where they feel like they belong and where they can communicate. And um, often a lot of our, our course materials will be online, they'll be available, students might come to live sessions, but they don't have an actual space that they can communicate in online. So whether that be a discussion forum, whether that be a Teams channel, whether it be a WhatsApp group, a Padlet board, whatever it is that you can use, there's lots and lots of technologies. It's really not about the technology you use, it's about what that group means for the students and what they get to do in that group. So the important thing here is to have informal and formal groups. So you're going to have discussion forums, you're going to have things, ways that you ask your students to interact formally as part of their coursework, but also having spaces where students can engage informally. Um, I've seen people set up cafe discussion boards or um, social space discussion boards where students get to go in and just talk about what, what their week's been like or um, their favourite song or whatever it is, but being able to have that safe space where they feel that they can communicate. And one thing that's actually really powerful here is also having a mix of anonymous versus non-anonymous spaces. So having an anonymous space where students are able to talk about things, ask questions without feeling the pressure of looking like they don't know what they're talking about, um, that it can be really, really powerful in connecting students and making them feel like they're not alone. They can see the fears of other people, they can see what other students are thinking, but they have an anonymous space that they can post to. The second area is language and culture. So the language that we use and the, um, the way that we talk to our students is so, so important. I think actually Emma touched on this in her presentation, which was fantastic, by the way. Um, um, being personable and being essentially human and showing your personality to students and using that as part of your language and the communication that you're discussing is really, really key to building that community. And it also allows students to think, well, this is the way I'm supposed to communicate. So it's setting those expectations and building that culture. And you have to be quite intentional about that and intentional about the way you're communicating and the, the mediums that you use to communicate. The next area is developing community habits. So this for me is one of the most important things. And um, the, the reason for this is really that we can set expectations for our students as a teacher. There's obviously things that you want them to be able to do. You want them to um, communicate in live classes. You want them to complete their coursework. But if you set those expectations and co-create the guidance with your, your student group, they will be much more um, involved in it. So actually sitting down with your students or virtually online, obviously, with your students and saying, OK, let's co-create these guidance together. We want this to be a community. We want you to feel that you can discuss things. We want to obviously get the work done. So what do you think and what do we feel should be the standards that we have? So it could be um, interacting in the forums. It could be um, interacting in group sessions. But whatever those um, standards are, actually developing those as a community will really, really help students feel more invested in them. And the last area is building a sense of self. So may, encouraging people's self and their diversity as an asset in your group. Um, and this comes really from personalization of your uh, course materials. Um, and again, of recognizing students fears of um, encouraging students to understand themselves in the context of a class, but also um, you know, in the context of the wider world, the wider university and the wider company. So I've got a few examples on some of the ways that we um, implemented this. Um, obviously, these are just a few. So Sorry, the first one, one, I think- one and a half minutes left. Yeah, perfect. Um, I think one of the most important things um, is that Teacher presence, and again, and um, this has been um, discussed a couple of times, teacher presence is really, really important. And often in online, unfortunately, teachers need to be more proactive about promoting this sense of um, community than they do face to face. 
So um, thinking about interacting and monitoring the forums, pushing along that um, discussion and pushing along that community. And it could just be as simple as putting in a little prompt um, to say, you know, what's what's your favourite song? What food are we all eating this evening? It doesn't always have to be connected to your coursework, but you have to sometimes lead, especially in the first few weeks when students are just getting to know each other. Um, things like icebreak and inductions are so, so important. Building in those community and those um, opportunities to interact as early on as possible. Um, so things like Padlet, Flipgrid is great. Um, there's a little example of Flipgrid on the screen here. Getting students to communicate together where they can see everybody in their class. So anything that where they can see everybody together is really, really powerful for building that community really actively and intentionally designing opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer interaction. So in your course materials, in your activities, your asynchronous activities, building in opportunities, so getting them to discuss in the forums, getting them to work in groups, and um, getting them to work in breakout rooms together. And sometimes when you push students to work together, that is when they really can form those friendships and that community. And don't be afraid to even use this in an, an assessed format. Um, and a, a few more things just before I finish up. Um, there is really a thing as the social norms appeal and when students see this being done by other people and it just becomes the norm of the class and you highlight good practice in this area, everybody will start to, to build into that as well. Um, really personalising your content, show your passion. You are the subject experts, so you are the people who are passionate about your subject, You um, your personality shines through and that helps to help Feel, help students feel like they're part of a community. Um, and the final thing is to really think about connecting to wider events as well. All the universities have been delivering online events, um, social events online. So just again, thinking about connecting your students to those events and reminding them that there's a wider community there for them to take part in. So not going to go through all of this, but just thinking about those lessons for the future, developing those spaces, setting your expectations, developing habits as a community. You need to lead the way, obviously, and um, designing those collaborative tasks and group work with that student experience in mind. And I think the most important thing is there is no one size fits all approach here. Um, all students are different, all groups are different, and we really need to think about um, adapting things. And it's, sometimes it's just about trying everything and seeing what works best for you um, as a class. Um, so we do have actually a Padlet board. I'll post the link after this um, in the chat that um, has a, a collaborative space where we've put some ideas and um, our teachers have put some ideas and feel free to add to that or take some ideas from it as well if you would like to. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I think we've got time for one question. Um, Steve, did you want sure. to take this again? Uh, yeah, OK, then, Phil. Um, yeah, I think Emma has um, intimated that she has a question, Phil. So uh, money to open Emma up so that she can uh, she can ask it of Coral. Of course. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, fantastic paper, Coral. I think I'd love to work with you on some of those things and perhaps take a comparative perspective on on how those those principles have been implemented. Um, my question is in relation to a, a, um, a comment that I was inclined to put on the thread, which is about the importance of uh, maintaining a work-life balance whilst yes. exposing yourself to kind of the rawness of your personality. I mean, my students got quite used to Bertie, my little beach on freeze, making the yes. sound in the background. <laughs> and that actually, I think, built towards these personality comments that came yeah. out in my module evaluation. Um, how do you do that? Or what tricks and, and tips do you have for for doing that whilst maintaining professionalism and all these other values that are embedded into sure. our pedagogical approaches. Yeah, yeah. And um, thanks, Emma. I think I think that's really that's really important. It is about finding that balance. And obviously, we don't want to be, you know, we don't want students to see our entire lives. <laughs> we want to have some things that are just personal to us. So I think it's about. Um, I think it's really an individual thing. It's about finding the balance that is right for you and what you're comfortable with and what obviously your university is comfortable with. I think having your, you know, especially in the moment, our pets are running around, we've got kids running around and I think we're all human and I think it's fine. And the, what we've got to remember is our students are at home and have many of these same things going on. And if we don't show them that that's okay and that's normal to have, then they won't engage with our class because they'll think, oh, I'm the only one that's got 
somebody in the background also working or I'm the only one that has um, something else going on so I can't you know I can't put my mic on or I can't put my camera on so I think it's really I think you know it's an individual thing but um, making it clear and setting those expectations at the beginning I think is important as well and and balancing that and I think you know you seem to have balanced it really really well in, in your course that you're delivering that you still they know where the line is and they know what your boundaries are and I think if you set those expectations at the beginning and say you know these are the times I'm available I'm going to take x amount of time to get back to you whether it's 24 hours if you've got international students type thing and um, you know you're not available at all hours of the day but also remembering that we're we're all human and actually showing that is even more important in an online environment. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I know that there's there's lots more. Sorry to interrupt you there, Emma. Um, but in the interest of keeping to time, we're going to have to move on. Um, so yeah, if we had, I'm sure we could talk all day on all of these. It's uh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> um, 